star. Star it means it's a conditional theorem depending on the synthesis hypothesis. We look at x goes to p1k a vibration. So this will be short for x is smooth and projective over k. And the geric fiber, is, the map is dominant, and the geric fiber is, is geometry integral. Okay. Vibration. So let's say x eta geometrically integral. Um, okay, now we assume that for each point M, schematic point in P1K of condemnation 1, that is a closed point in P1K, uh, there exists a component Y in the fiber, component of multiplicity 1. I repeat, this fiber, this, this fiber is a divisor. It breaks up into irreducible divisors, possibly multiplicity. So we, we want multiplicity one. And moreover, uh, the algebraic closure, so this fiber is defined of the field K of M, which is a finite extension of K, to really feel at M. And the algebraic closure of K of M in the function field of Y, is abelian. It's called the abelian splitting condition. Okay. And then we assume Schinster's hypothesis. And it's the, in the sophisticated version, well, anyway, the consequence of Schinster's hypothesis, H. And then if uh, so I'm going to be very precise. If x of a k, bar vertical of x uh, is not empty, then there exists a t0 in p1 of k with x t0 smooth. And uh, x t0 of a k not empty. So, uh, bra vertical of x, uh, we had this in the case of Cunning Bundle. I, I repeat in the, in the next slide, I'll, I'll say what this is. But anyway, you could, I mean, just for a minute, just read the bra man in set is not empty. And the conclusion is then, there is one fiber of a rational point which has points ever locally. Okay. Now, if you think for one minute, this counterexample we had with the Cunning Bundle, y squared plus z squared equals 3 minus x squared, x squared minus 2 over x. The fibers are conics. Okay? It's satisfied as a principle. But uh, what happened in that case that this condition was not fulfilled. Okay? Because if we had a fiber of a rational point which had points ever locally, then we would have a rational point for this conic bundle. So bar vertical is... Okay, so is Straight, yeah. So if I'm if I'm my vibration, which I always like to to look at vertically, that's why it's called bra vertical. Bra vertical of X is a set of elements in the bra group of X such that the restriction alpha to the joint fiber comes from bra group of the base K of P1. You see, you have X uh, X theta. This is what was called the nice, the nice fiber in my lecture. It doesn't look very nice, but that's the, that's the joint fiber. So you have bra of x, you restrict to the joint fiber, and then the, the ground field is the function field of P1, and you ask that when restricted to the, to the joint fiber, it comes from the, down below. And this, re, this part of the bra group really accounts, so you can look at the whole bra group as an abstraction to the extent of a rational point. And this part of the bra group, hopefully, accounts not for the, the total abstraction for, for a rational point, but for the abstraction to having one rational point in the base such that the fiber has points ever locally. Okay. That's what we saw in the, uh, the other slide. And uh, there's one corollary of this theorem, which is that if, if, by ch if you know that, that if moreover uh, the fibers 
satisfy Hasser principle plus weak approximation. And then, under this hypothesis, we conclude that x of k is not empty. And in fact, we even conclude more. We conclude that x of k top, the, the closure of the set of rational points in the ADL, is x of a k bar vertical of x. Now this, uh, I'm talking about a vibration here, uh, x goes to p one k. I didn't make, apart from this condition of uh, multiplicity for the fibers and this abelian condition, I didn't make an assumption of the type of fibers. So for instance, the fibers could be cups of genus one. Okay. And in fact, there's a paper by Sven and Dyer in which he studies uh, cubic, diagonal cubic surfaces, ax cubed plus by cubed equals cz cubed plus dt cubed, as we had seen with the same thing, it started with, well, the way Hasser started with x squared plus dx squared, cz squared plus dt squared. And the beginning of his paper is to prove that uh, if, under some favorable circumstances, there is one value t0, such that ax x cubed plus by cubed equals t0 equals cz cubed plus dv cubed as solutions in all completions. So you, you, you take your cubic surface, you view it as a fiber product of uh, two families of curves of genus one over P1, and then you pr prove, and in fact, unconditionally in his case, that you can find a variable parameter where you have points over locally. But afterwards, you're in trouble because you have curves of genus one which have points over locally, and then this, to decide the rational point is another matter. But the point is, in Swindler's paper is that uh, he doesn't have to assume Schinzel because this is a case when there are just two bad fibers at rational points. So the case of Schinzel, which is used in that case, is zero clays theorem and promise and arithmetic progression. Okay, so this is a parenthesis, so that's why I didn't write. Okay, now, uh, <laughs> I hope you have registered bar vertical because I want to keep that slide uh, in front of you. And now there's, there's an actual theorem, which is in the case when k is equal to q, and you have a, a, a vibration, x to p1 q. And uh, so assume one, that all fibers at points in P1 minus the rational points are split. So split, I remind you, it means that there is a component of multiplicity one which is zero integral. So you could just for a minute, you could think that just the bad fibers are only above rational points. Okay, that's the assumption here. Bad fibers are only above the rational points of P1. And uh, two, uh, you, you make the, the abelian, splitting, abelian splitting condition. That is, at the bad fibers, which are just at, at, at the rational points, uh, there is a component of MBC1, and then the algebra, such that the algebraic closure of Q this time in the function field of that, uh, of that, of that, of that uh, divisor uh, is abelian. It's an abelian extension of Q. This is the case for conic bundles. You see, for conic bundles, the bad fibers, you just have this, this configuration of two conjugate lines, so there's a quire extension here. Okay, uh, and then, uh, then, there exists, M, uh, there exists T, well, M0, sorry. M0 in P1 of Q. Uh, X, M0, smooth. And X, M0, a, Q, not empty. And that's a CRM, and this is based on uh, what I showed you in a special case uh, at the end of the last lecture. Uh, this is based on Green, Tau, Ziegler. That is, they provide a suitable substitute. In this case, that they, they provide a suitable substitute for Shinsen hypothesis. And you have, of course, the core array about the Hasse principle. So if fibers satisfy Hasse principle plus weak approximation, then uh, you conclude that uh, then X of AQ, uh, where did I, I forgot an assumption, of course. You should have told me. I have to assumption that there is no obstruction, okay? <laughs> and three, uh, X of AQ, 
bar vertical is not empty. Okay, so no, no bar <laughs> obstruction. Then you, you, you get this M0 like this. And so uh, again, if there's no bar obstruction, then you conclude that X of Q uh, top is X of AQ uh, bar X. Okay, that's an actual theorem. And so for instance, this applies. Sorry, yeah, push it. I, I, I. I should write in, I've been told to write just in the middle, but I haven't managed to do it. Okay? Yes. So, the, um, so, so example, uh, we, we're back to examples because to see concrete examples. Uh, if we take norm k of a q, let me stick to the case of q where we have actual theorems of an x1 omega 1 plus xn omega n equals product t minus ei, I range from one to whatever, d, d could be very big. Uh, then for x is smooth projective, and, and, and k, capital K of a k, a q is cyclic. Then uh, x of a q, uh, bro, uh, bro vertical in fact, not empty, implies x of, x of q, X of Q top equals X of AQ bro X. Okay. So because in this case, the fibers are just given by norm equals a constant and the expression is cyclic. So we know that for equation of norm equals a constant, has a principle and weak approximation hold. Okay. And this, is, this was absolutely striking because uh, it implies in particular that uh, provided this, con this condition is fulfilled, this implies that X of Q is Zariski dense in X, which is something which until uh, uh, 2010, we had no idea. So it could, it could have been the case that we look at an equation like this, even with a quadratic, with a, with a quadratic extension on the left-hand side, and say so you take D is 100, it could have been the case that there are just finitely many fibers which have rational points. And that's, not the, that's, not the, that's not true. I mean, as soon as one fiber has, has a rational point, the rational points are going to be zero dense. Is there significance of this splitting? Well, the significance of the splitting is that it's forced on us by the proof. And the proof is mimicking as So I, this, is, this, is a, this is quite, uh, thank you. This is, I, I would have probably made this point at some point. So the proof, the proof of all these results Builds, it's an elaboration on Hess's proof, and which was this final thing that in the end, we have say, a conic or you have an equation norm equals a constant for a cyclic extension, which has solutions in all completion except possibly one, and then we're happy by, by reciprocity. So, yeah, I should say that these things, so use, this uses, so the proof uses, let's say, two ingredients. Well, it uses the sequence bar of k, direction bar of q, k, k, kv goes to Q mod Z. The reciprocity argument, Hass's reciprocity argument, sorry, this is argument as in Hasse. And then, uh, and then it uses Harry's formal lemma. Which I, I discussed a lot in the previous lecture. Okay. Um, so, um, so it's a very disturbing condition, disturbing condition. So I mean, it's very nasty, and we want to, we always wanted to get rid of it. And in fact, one of the reasons why I'm giving these lectures is that Harpers and Mittenberg have managed to get rid of it. Okay, then I'm going to explain that. Okay. So, so if we go back to this equation, for instance, I mean, if k over q is abelian, then we're we're fine. The abelian splitting condition is fulfilled. But if you take k over q, an arbitrary extension, of, uh, an arbitrary extension the, the Hasser principle doesn't hold for norm equals c. So you, see, you start thinking, well, this is, okay, it doesn't hold, but could we have a better conjecture than the one we had before? And so this is the, the better conjecture. Yeah. So the better conjecture is 
uh, so here is, well, let, let's call it a conjecture this time. And I'm, I'm going to make some restrictions on the, some more restrictions. So we have a number field, we have a vibration. And we assume now that the generic fiber, x theta over k of p1 is, geometry integral, is, is a rationally connected variety, is a geometrically rationally connected variety. Okay. Uh, and then, so this is one, and assume that for, uh, I'd say almost all, we'll get uh, something more precise later, m in P1 of k, uh, xm, the fiber at m, so this is a variety of k, xm of k, yeah, that's right. xm of k uh, top, is equal to xm of a k bar xm. So we assume that, uh, this so the fibers are rationally connected variety. I told you there's a conjecture that for rationally connected variety, this property should, should be true. And so the conjecture is that you can iterate this process. So assume this, then, so this is the conjecture, then x of k top is equal to x of a k bar x. So if in the fibers the conjecture is true, it should be true for the total space. And that's a more, uh, and people like to say robust in this country, more robust conjecture than the one where we, you put the hazard principle to the fibers and then you're stuck at some point. Okay. And you, you can compare this with uh, uh, the assumptions we had here. So, well, no, let's say this one. This is a conjecture, okay? So we'll, over an arbitrary number field, we'll get close to it using Shinsel. But uh, so the conjecture here with this, this assumption that there's a Y of multiplicity one. So now if you have a family of rationally connected variety, it is automatic that any point, at any point, over any point M, there's a component of multiplicity one. That's a consequence of, of the graeber harris Uh But then this Abelian condition has been dropped off here. It's much nicer. I mean, for instance, you, you, uh, one typical case we want, we're interested in is, uh, well, example. So one example is the, 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 the question we had before. Norm capital K over little k of equals P of T, where this is an arbitrary extension of fields, of number fields, and you have to, as many variables here as the degree of K over K. So we'd like to get this. We know that for the fibers, this, this hypothesis is true. We want it for the total space. Well, let's. <laughs> I mean, having a section of a K would be, of course, the end of the story. <laughs> no, 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 it's, uh, no, it's, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, take a conic bundle over P1Q, uh, which, okay, and uh, over Q bar, of course, it has a section, it's 10 theorem, you don't have to appeal to the high star, and of course, it generally doesn't have a section. Yeah. So, I must appear in my mind. So, Nine, okay, it's 9.50, I need to stop at 9.50. Okay, so. So, uh, the, uh, the, um, the idea of um, allowing the fibers to be possible counterexamples to that's a principle, but controlled by Baumannin, uh, was developed in a paper of RA, so. I tell you we're getting closer, so this is 1994-1997 in his thesis in 1994. So uh, Harry got a result of that kind, but under, yes, under a very strong condition, that uh, condition, delta equals one. That is, there's just one rational point, there's just one close point where the fiber is not split, and that point is rational. So point at infinity of P1, if you want, okay? And so, um, so Harry managed to do that, and 
So in, this was in this paper that he developed this, uh, this formal lemma. And he also developed, so to prove this, what happens is that you have x over p1, and you have x theta over q of t. And so what you prove, so the, the, so the fact, is so x, x theta is uh, geometrically rationally connected, as I said. So the, the fact, which is, well, it's a theorem, which I already, uh, say, theorem, which I already proves, is that uh, there exists a Hilbert set in P1 of K of points M such that the specialization map for bar of X eta divided by bar of K of P1 goes to bar group of the fiber Xm divided by bar of K is onto. So you have the generic fiber. You have this quotient, which is a finite group because we assume that X eta was rationally connected. One can prove this, implies this. And then on each fiber, you have this thing which obstructs, possibly obstructs as a principle of the fiber. And you want, to, you, you want to find this fiber which has points ever locally, but you also want to find a, a, uh, an adelic point which is also goal to the bar of this, knowing something over the global object. And so the, 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 the thing is to use bar of X eta. Now, bar of X theta is not bar of X, so there will be further difficulties, and this is where the Aris formal lemma comes in, and also some other thing which I will not describe in the lectures. Okay. But uh, this is a basic point. And the basic point here, so we've seen, in fact, in the lecture by uh, Varela, one of the lectures by Varela Alvarado, he mentioned specialization for the, for the Picard group. So a rationally connected variety, the, the Picard group is just the narrow server group. He was talking about narrow server group. And so you, you actually, you, this is a version of this. Uh, say, in a simple case, what you do is that you look at peak H1 K of T, peaks of uh, K of T, K bar of T, uh, K, K of T bar, sorry. It says that there's a Hilbert set of points in P1 of K. So Hilbert set here, yeah, okay. So if you have a, um, if you have a polynomial in two variables, f of x and t, which is irreducible uh, as a polynomial in, K in x and t, Hilbert's uh, irreducible theorem says that there exist many points t0, such that when you specialize to t0, the polynomial f of x t0 is irreducible. Okay, and the set of such points the set of T0 such that f of x T0 is irreducible is called a Hilbert set in, in, uh, in P1 of K. Uh, to be precise, a Hilbert set is a finite section of such. Okay. So, and the point is that, uh, so it's a place where uh, the, the generic situation looks like the special situation. Okay, so the generic so is irreducible, the special is still irreducible, and this is what you do here. You compare H1 KFT, pick X KFT bar, with H1 of Km, the reduced field at M, which is, is just K, with peak of Xm bar. So there's a specialization map at the level of the Picard of the generic fiber, the geometric Picard of the generic fiber to the Picard of the special fiber. This is the one that came in in, the, in, in Tony Alvarado's talk. And then you apply Galois cohomology to it. Okay, this, is, this is really a new development in, in this method. Well, new, I mean, it was new uh, 20 years ago. And this had nine applications. So, for instance, uh, Harry got this corollary that, uh, so let me just quote one. Uh, if you take x in P4k uh, cubic hypersurface, which contains a line, a P1k, then a weak approximation holds for x. Okay, so yeah, for, to prove this, you have to build an index. So if you have a, a line like this, so if you were in P3 and you had a line, uh, you can fiber your thing into conic bundles by taking the plane. So you can fiber your, three, your threefold into families of such surfaces, which are conic bundles. And for these specific conic bundles with a rational point, uh, this is Sierra Mazalberga and Skobogatov that the Brownian obstruction is the only one. So you see you're fibering. So it's a very nice situation because you're fibering over P1 so, so what you're doing is, you by after blow up, you have x dash to p1. The bar group of x dash is, is trivial as a, for any, in fact, any hypersurface, smooth hypersurface in projective space. There's no bar group. There's no bar obstruction. 
and then you're fibering into varieties for which possibly there's a bra group. Need not be zero. Okay, so it's uh, so you go through a case where there could be counterexamples, but you you go to some fiber where in fact there's the bar mass certain is the only one, so you're in business. And you see, you could dream to do the same thing. Uh, if you look at the arbitrary surface in P3, uh, everybody dreams, but nobody <laughs> has to do it. Uh, to, we hope to control uh, the obstruction to the Lasser principle for uh, curves of genus one by if the average is finite. So you would hope to fiber your cubic surface into pencils of curves of genus one and try to find a nice fiber, but then the, one does not have to, to, to arrange the thing so that the fiber actually has no Brownian obstruction. Okay. So I told you the ingredients in Harris proof. I managed this time. Okay. And so, so as I said, there's this uh, big paper of Harpas and Wittenberg. Building in part and another, so this is, let's say, let's put it 2014, yeah. And there's an earlier paper of Wittenberg, I forgot it, maybe 2013, which is used in that paper. And so they get rid of the abelian splitting condition. So both in the conditional theorem and Shinsel, and in fact, they're going to change the Shinsel hypothesis to something else. And in the unconditional theorem, which uses Grintal uh, Ziegler, uh, using some further results in that direction. So what are the new uh, ingredients? The new ingredients are, they replace, uh, well, they replace, in, instead, so instead of bar of k goes to dark sum, bar of kv goes to q mod z, they use poitou tate. We could have the video at this point. Uh, for uh, we could have they use point to Tate duality for tori. So a torus T over K is an algebraic group such that T cross K over the algebraic closure looks like a, a product of copies of GM. Okay. And point to Tate duality says the following. Well, one part of point to Tate it's a long, there's a long exact sequence, but I just write the one which is of interest here. It's H1 K T goes to direct sum for all the places V in omega of the H1 KV T, KV is the completion of K at V, goes to HOM, and I'll explain in a second the notation, H1 K T hat Q mod Z. So T hat here is a lattice, a Galois lattice, which is the character group over K bar of T bar. Okay, you all know that a homomorphism from GM to GM is given by simply an integer, x goes to x to the n. And so this is a lattice. And there's an exact sequence. Here. And the pairing here is given by cup product because t cross t hat maps to GM. So locally, you can pair h1 kvt with h1 kvt hat, and you land in the bra group of kv, which is q mod z. Okay, so that's how you get to q mod z. So this is part to take duality. So in case you haven't seen the torus before, uh, let me show you what, uh, just to tell you what, what happened. So uh, if a torus which will be very important is this one, R1 capital K over KGM, which is given by simply the equation norm capital K over K, which we've seen many times, X1 omega 1 plus Xn omega n equals 1. Okay, that's an algebraic group. This is a group of norm element, uh, element Elements of norm one in, K, in capital K, in capital K star, as an algebraic group, and the H one of K with values in this T is simply K star divided by norms. Okay, we're not assuming capital K of K cyclic anymore here. So that sequence over there 
tells you something about, so it tells you that there's an exact sequence, all V, of the KV star divided by norm KV star. KV, KV is shorthand for capital K tensor little k KV. Goes to home, and uh, then home of something which you can make explicit into Q mod Z. Okay? So there's a, in the case when capital K, if, so if capital K of a K is cyclic, then you recover a part of the sequence, if capital is cyclic, then you have inclusions into bar of K. Here you have inclusions into direction bar of KV, and then here you have Q mod Z. Okay? But uh, well, this, this, is, uh, this gets here. But if, if it's not cyclic, you still have an exact sequence like this. So there's a way to control what prevents a family of, uh, of elements which satisfies some explicit condition to come from a global element here, modular norms. So let me also remind you that uh, So H1 KT, so H1 KT, sorry, I'm, I'm using this shorthand all the time. This is H1 of Galois with values in T of K bar. Okay. Uh, now there's, there's another thing which we, we, I talked a bit about etal cohomology. Given a variety U of a K, you can look at H1 etal of U with values in T. And this thing is well known to classify uh, so, so-called tosses, also called principal homogeneous spaces. So, principal, which is principal homogeneous spaces. PHS. So, I, I, I tend to dislike acronyms, so I would prefer to use tosser. Okay. Uh, so, this classifies uh, tosses over U under T. And what is this? This is a variety Y with a morphism to, uh, to U and an action of T on Y, T cross Y goes to Y, which acts faithfully and transitively in the fibers, in the geometric fibers. On the geometric fibers. Okay, that's it also. This, this thing classified this thing. Okay. And now, okay, now I come to the second, what I consider one of the second ingredients, uh, one of the important ingredients in this work of Harpers and, uh, and Wittenberg is that they replace, so replace the formal, the Aris formal lemma for the bra group. by a formal lemma for uh, toss for tosses under a toss. Okay. And the statement is uh, so 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 what is the statement is so here's a, the pr pr proposition. Uh, you're given, just as we were given an element in the bra group of an open variety U, we're, we're given U of a K, which is an open variety, and uh, we're given uh, a tosser, how do you call it, Y, Y over U, a tosser under T. Okay, and then, um, so given, okay, now we consider, okay, so I should put it, sorry. Um, okay, consider the image of H1KT hat in bra group of U given by cup product, given by cup product with the class with the, of the torsor T, of the torsor Y, so Y over U. So you see we have maps from H1 KT hat cross H1 U 
T to H2 as, as I push this back to U, and I have H1 U T hat cross H1 U T, and I have T, T cross T hat goes to GM. So this goes to H2 U GM, which is bar above U. Okay, so I, I've fixed my torsors, I've fixed the class here. So I have a homomorphism from H1 K T hat to bar U, and this is a finite group, this is finite. So I consider this is finite group B. So uh, I don't know, I call it phi. B equals image of phi. Okay. And then uh, assume that, uh, I think I'll go on, okay. So assume that uh, if I take Q in X, a smooth compactification, that um, U of AK uh, B intersection bar of X is not empty. So I take an analytic point MV in U of AK for which I know that for all alpha in this finite group B, B is a group of bar, is a finite subgroup of bar of U, but I just look at the ones which are nice, the ones which are unrified at infinity. So I assume there's no Brown abstraction for this, sum of alpha of MV is zero. Then, question? Sorry. Uh, you adjust the focus on, the on this one, yeah, thank you. The focus? Yeah. The focus? Yeah, because it's not very. Uh, uh, I'm probably unable to do that. Uh, I, just, I think it's the same as the point of What do I do? Uh, there are too many buttons here. I, 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 want, I don't want to. <laughs> now, if, if somebody could help, uh, it would be good, but I, I won't be able to do it. Sorry? Ah, this is better? Is it okay or? Okay. So, 30 seconds extra for me. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, then the, the, the conclusion is that uh, there exists. Uh, say a row in H1 KT such that for the twisted torsor Y twisted by row over U uh, there exists a family NV in Y row of AK with NV uh, first of all there is one I, okay, I, I, I forgot the condition. So S is a finite set of places. And the NV goes to NV for V in S. So we have this variety U and this variety Y over U. And we had local points, a family of local points uh, down below. And we'd be very happy if we could lift them to local points upstairs. So it's not so simple. But if there is no Brahman abstraction attached to the thing which is unnumberified, then in fact, you can twist your torsor, uh, which means, well, means change a bit the coefficients, and then you find another variety defined over k, mapping to u, which is a torsor under t, and which has points over locally, and moreover, given a finite set of places, you can do it in such a way that the, the points mv for v and s actually come from points upstairs. So I'm not saying that each MV is going to come from a, a point NV. I'm just saying for, for a finally chosen one, I can do it. Okay. So this is Harry's, well, this is the version of Harry's formal lemma, but for torsus. So the e example, so because uh, maybe you don't see what these twists are, but in concrete cases, like the equations I like, it's completely obvious what it is. So in these cases, you start with norm capital K of a K of X1 omega 1 plus Xn omega n equals product of t minus ei, different from zero. This is my bottom variety u. And I look at the torsor given by, so it's going to be a torsor under a torus, so the torus t will be uh, r1 k, k over k gm to the power uh, i equals one to r, uh, d, let's say, uh, d. And the torsor is given by t minus ei equals norm 
capital K over K of variables x1 i omega 1 plus dot 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 plus x uh, n i omega n. So that's a nice torsor under R1GN on, on an open set of uh, defined line. I pull it back to this variety. And so I take, the, the, uh, I take all of them for i running from 1 to d. And then that theorem will tell me that if there is no Brahman abstraction for the smooth compactification, so if blah, 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 then there exists, this is a twist. So I want to illustrate the twist. Then you can find C1, C, C, Cd in K star such that the variety given by T minus EI equals CI norm capital K over little k of this thing. I running from 1 to, uh, to, to D uh, over the variety given by with product of CI is equal to 1 over the variety which we had here. So norm equals product of T minus CI. So this variety upstairs has points in all completions. And then, uh, and, and, they, and the given local points down here, you can find, I mean, for VNS, you can find actually the local points upstairs with mapping to these local points for VNS. So here we had no abstraction for the compactification, and we've produced these auxiliary varieties, which are much, much bigger dimension, for which uh, there is a point ever locally. So in the case where capital K of K was cyclic, we could conclude using Schilson. But now, capital K, K is, not, is not cyclic, so we, we have to do something more. Okay. Okay. So, in fact, you have to do something more. In fact, you have to change tensor. So this is what Harpas and Wittenberg have done. So, so Harpas and Wittenberg introduced a new hypothesis. Uh, which is a bit uh, a bit long to explain, but I think it's important. So uh, let me call it let uh, let me call it HW. Okay. So here's the here's the here's the, here's the condition. So consider a system T minus E I equals C I norm L I over K, and I just write Xi I for short for a variable in L I. So we have. Uh, the EI are in K. This is a simple case of the conjecture. It's a conjecture. It has more indices, so it's, it gets harder to explain in, in a lecture. So I, I take the EI in the ground field. K is a number field, as usual. So the, 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 the CI, sorry, the CI are in K. And we look at the system like this, I from or N from Y to, say, D. Okay. Now, uh, so you, you define the obvious bad set, uh, b a finite bad set S in omega for this equation. So that means you look at all the places at infinity, the places where, which are ramified in one of the field extensions here. These are various field extensions, Li over K. The places where CI is not a unit, the places where EI is not integral, the places where some EI minus EG is not a unit. So it's a finite list. Okay, so you write it down here. Yeah, now you take any finite set S containing this, this, this bad set. Okay, so take any, uh, so let's call it this one S0, any finite set S containing S0. Okay, and now um, you assume you are given the local solutions of this system for V in S. So we're not assuming uh, we're not assuming anything else. I mean, we're not assuming that there are solutions that are locally here. Okay. So this we have TVs xi iv for V in S. Okay. And then the conjecture is says that then this is the conjecture. Uh, there exists, and then you give yourself an epsilon positive. Uh, a real number. Then uh, there exists a T0 in K such that uh, T0 minus TV uh, at, for, the, for, for the place V 
is smaller than epsilon for all VNS. And for V not in S, uh, if the valuation of um, T0 minus EI is positive, then there exists a place W of Li, so this field extension Li over K, which is of degree one, one over V. Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, what the conjecture says. You can produce a T0, which is very close to TV. So in particular, certainly it will be, it will, it will be represented by this form of a KV, uh, provided epsilon is small enough. And, uh, and the condition is that for some V not, if v not in S, what happens with V not in S is that if V of T0 minus, if, if T0 is very close to EI for the VID topology, then the, the, uh, the extension LI over K splits partially. That is, there's one, so if LI over K was Galois, it would be totally split. Okay. Right, so that's the conjecture. So it's a bit hard to swallow. I remember the first time uh, uh, Wittenberg wrote it on the, uh, the blackboard during a lecture. I was just thinking, uh, what is this? So, it's, so in fact, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a more concrete version, uh, there's a more palatable uh, version of this conjecture. Uh, uh, um, and so what do I want to say about it? Uh, well, actually, I should say nothing because I, I've reached my time. So I'll just write one, just one theorem. So the theorem is the theorem star. So by Arpas and Wittenger, modulo HW. Uh, if we take X goes to P1K, a vibration in rationally connected varieties. Varieties. Um, and that's all. Um, uh, Uh, if X of AK bro is not empty, then there exists T0 in P1 of K uh, with X T0 smooth. This is half as we can buy. And X T0 of AK bro X not empty. Okay, so that's the theorem one once. And uh, it's been reduced to uh, a conjecture about uh, these specific equations. So one thing striking is that here, I'm taking an arbitrary vibration into rationally connected varieties. I'm not looking at these specific equations, you know, norm equals PFT. And so what they've discovered, and which I mean, is something which, when, I mean, it's quite natural if you think about this problem, is that if you look at your vibration, you look at the bad fibers, and the five bad fibers uh, because of, of graber harris star, you have this, this field, ex you have this uh, component of C1, which creates a field extension of your, of your field K. And then somehow these equations are universal models for the, for, the generic, for the problem here. So if you can solve the problem at the level of these very concrete equations, you can solve it for any vibration into rationally connected variety. That's the message of this theorem. And I stop. So, uh, we're getting uh, closer and closer to uh, present day results, but uh, for the time being, we're still back in uh, 1994 or 1998. So, um, so let me mention, so, let, so I, I gave you, I like to give concrete equations, but from time to time you, you give a general statement. Okay, so here's one. 